All right, this Naver account and this whole setup here has been messing with my mind for hours. It's been like trying to reverse engineer Rubik's Cube or the worst puzzle you can think of and the online help really didn't help. I'm working on a tutorial series explaining operators and this one really flummoxed me. So bear with me and hopefully you'll get what took me hours to get. In this setup here, I've got this box so I can guide it, linked to this um, cylinder which is showing 5 centimeters radius. That's all its purpose is, is to show radius in relation to this particle. And this is actually a particle and I've also linked the original source particle and updating the position. So in other words, when I move this, the particle's position gets updated and we can see five centimeter radius in relation to this particle. So having said that, let's explain this. So in neighbor count mode, this is a particle, right? And we can't have 1.25, 1.5, 1.75 particles. We can have one, two, three, four whole numbers. So we're looking at neighbor count. So if we have greater than one, that means two. So we must have two or more particles within a five centimeter radius for these to be sent out and turn yellow. So when we look at these three particles here, why are they yellow? They're yellow because if you took any one of the three yellows and said, is there two or more within its radius? The answer will be yes. This one has these two within its radius. This cylinder is five centimeters also, right? This one has two within. This one has two within. So that's why they turned yellow. This one didn't turn yellow because it does not have two or more particles within its five centimeter radius. So using my little tricky setup here and we start to move it closer, right? You can see it still hasn't turned, still hasn't turned, but boom, because these two particles are now within its five centimeter radius, it meets the neighbor test. So there's two things to establish here. The neighbor test is any particle, they all perform the test, right? So all particles perform the test. And we'll do a couple of variations of this example because it's such a mind messer, right? And, but reevaluating again, if I move our particle here, and you can see two, but if it's only one, it doesn't meet two or more. As soon as I move it close enough, boom. All right, I hope you help. I hope that really helps you get what's going on here, and we'll cover this more in depth. And because it's such a thing, I'm actually going to release this video on YouTube separate to my um, tutorial series. But let's keep going. To cement our understanding, I changed the greater than to be 2. So what we're now saying, summarized, is if the neighbor count for any particle is 3 or more within a 5 centimeter radius, you're allowed to be turned yellow, sent out, right? So right now they're all blue because look at any one of those particles and none of them have three or more within a five centimeter radius. So we're gonna slide this little particle down here and we're gonna see, boom, this turned yellow. The reason this turned yellow, and, and we can use this measurement sphere here to, to verify why, the reason this turned yellow, if you put this five centimeter radius test here, you can see that it meets the condition of having three or more particles within its range. And in this particular scenario, it's the only particle that has three or more, right? If we kind of move this, you can see it doesn't have three because that right hand one is out of the range. This one doesn't have three. The only one that has three within that five centimeter radius is this yellow one, which explains why that yellow one turned yellow and and passed the test. I'm just going to recenter 
that cylinder, that's our measurement cylinder. And obviously if we go closer, we're gonna end up having more. So now if you use that, if we took this uh, measurement thing here and put it on any, this particle has three or more. This particle has three, this and this. And now we can easily see why all those particles turned yellow and passed the neighbor test. So let's reverse it and use less than as a test. So we're now going to cement our knowledge by looking at less than. And you have to think about this because this operator is a bit of a mind messer. Neighbor count less than two. So that translates into less than two can only be one. So in other words, each particle can only have one particle or less within its range of five. So our little fancy movable particle here is the only one that qualifies because it's the only one that has one or less within its five centimeters range. Let's use this other tool here and say, if we put that there, five centimeters, you can see it doesn't have one or less. It has two within its range. This one has two within its range. This one has two. That's why they don't qualify and don't turn yellow, right? So I hope that explains it. And you can see now if we move this closer, right? As long as it only has one within the range, this is going to stay yellow because the test is one or less within the range. So as soon as we introduce a second particle, it no longer meets the test. All right, so I hope that visually this really shows how this operator works. And obviously we're using you know, this range test here because we can visualize it very easy but the principle would be the same for the rest all right this took me ages to figure this out it was really like messing with my mind so to finish on this neighbor and the mind messing all right i'll just show you something too so we just went over that so now we change this to three and let me translate again if the neighbor count is less than three which equals two Right, so translate it again. If any particle has less than has two or less particles within its range, it meets the test. So if we look, this has two or less in its range. This has two or less in its range. This has two or less in its range, and this has two or less in its range, which is why all the particles turned yellow, all right? If we use our movable tester here and go down, we can see how the test is working. I hope this helps anybody else out there who really kind of got messed up by trying to figure out this operator. Um, Obviously, you can change the radius size. You can also make it by shape, but I don't want to convolute this tutorial, all right? As long as we understand that when we're in neighbor count mode here, then we're talking about particle count here and forget the decimal point. And then you really got to make the adjustment by whatever it says here. So less than means two or less, all right? Greater than would mean uh, four or more. In this test so think about what's being written and said here and then think about the test condition maybe we could just deviate and do one of these other tests so we can um, like really knuckle this damn thing down so I've set up a more complex example and all I did was link particles to move boxes and told particles to follow the position of my source sphere and I've set up red, yellow, blue, and pink as four random card particles placed somewhere in the scene. The test radius is three centimeters, hence I've linked a three centimeter radius 
to each particle so we can see this whole test zone. So every particle has a three centimeter test zone associated with it. And I can move each particle based on what I do here, all right? So right now, the test condition is neighbor count. If it's equal to three, so if any particle has three particles within three centimeters of its radius, we're going to see it turn white because that's what I've said over here, all right? So right now, all the particles are their independent colors. We start to move this particle towards here and we can see that the yellow, uh, sorry, the yellow particle turned white. It met its test condition. And I know it's hard to see, you know, through all this layers of color. And maybe I could just zoom in a little bit, right? I still want to be able to reach my movers. We can see that the only particle here that has three in this centimeter, three centimeter radius is this one here. It has this, this, and this all within that range. That's why no one else turned white. If I kind of move this down here, we can now see these two turn white because they're the only ones that meet this three centimeter radius test and must have three particles in that test. So when we look at this white particle here, we can see that it has three. When we look at this white particle here, we can see that it has three in its range. I hope that that really helps visualize uh, what's going on with this property test once and for all. And maybe when we understand this, we can make better animations in relation to, uh, and you know, we looked at less than, greater than, we could do inside range and outside range and maybe I could repeat the process, but I'm not sure it's necessary, but maybe we'll just do one more with inside of a range and then we'll close on this tutorial. So now we're looking for a range and we read this. Neighbor count can be one or two particles within its range. So we see these three all turn white, which means they either have, each one of them either has one or two particles within the range. If we bring this in closer here, all right, we can see now they all turned uh, white because they all either only have one or two. But if we come over here, the middle one, the yellow one, turned back to failing the test because it actually has more than two in its range, right? So, I mean, you can see that based on what you do, you can really, you know, do some pretty crazy kind of testing. I mean, this is how they make those kind of uh, growth effects like a virus growth or something. And maybe I'll look at that as an example, but I'm gonna leave it here. I hope I took some of this mystery out of this whole thing.